Ciao ragazzi! This is Katie Portanova, and you're listening to Florence and Me. I'm a lover of stories and all things Italian, and I'm going to bring you all that in this podcast. My intention is to inspire you to step out of your comfort zone and explore life and travel the world. Join me as I tell you my story and many others about Italy and my love, Florence. Andiamo! Ciao a tutti! I am back for a new episode. Um, we're going to talk about all about Campusevoli. Uh, this travel experience is going to be uh, my first one I'm in Tuscany. And I want to give you a little bit of a history of why I've chosen to use Camporsevoli. Back in 2006, uh, Katie decided, I decided to, that I wanted to be uh, an au pair. And those of you that don't know what an au pair is, it's, it's a nanny. Um, in Italian, they'd call me the Tata. And I went through an agency out of Torino which then found me the family of the Orzalesi, um, Grossi Orzalesi, and they um, were the family that I was um, put together with. And I left the beginning of January uh, 2007. And now just to put this into perspective, usually all pairs last probably about three months, the most, maybe six I ended up staying for nine months. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed the time I had with this family, um, but I did um, notice towards the end of my nine months that I probably stayed too long um, just for my own sake and for the kids and for the for Valentina. Like, I think there was a little bit of a disconnect when it came to me being there that long and personalities probably were definitely clashed. So it was kind of hard, <laughs> but anyway, um, the beautiful thing that I got out of this experience is that I got to see this amazing countryside and I got to know a family, a very, um, amazing family that has a lot of history, um, has a lot of history in Florence and, um, outside of Florence um, specifically Camposevoli. The family um, has this place about an hour and a half south of Florence um, in the town of Cittona. And Cittona is um, a very small town. And I'll be honest, like, it's not a town that I have been to yet. <laughs> because every time that I went to Camposevoli, we just went to Camposevoli and that was it. And we didn't really travel around because I was watching the kids and, and such. Anyway, um, I found that it to be a sign that I wanted that this was going to happen. Like I, um, in 2018, uh, my sister and I, my mom, we went to visit Italy in um, October and we were searching for wedding venues for my sister and my sister happened upon Camposevoli in one of her searches. Like, I didn't, I didn't even know they did weddings. And, you know, long story short, um, Emmy got married in um, a Camposevoli, a beautiful wedding um, in June of 2019. Uh, so I connected again with Valentina and it, and it was like a really good feeling. Um, I... I just had a lot of really amazing memories with them and the girls. Um, they have two girls, Carolina and Maria. And and I just, uh, yeah, I there was something about the interaction we had in 2018, me and Valentina. And then when I finally was like, okay, hey, I want to do this with you. And I was setting it up for June of 2020. And, and needless to say, that did not happen. So I'm... I'm quite grateful that it will be my first one um, to take you and to help you um, 
see Italy in, in a really amazing way. The, um, the Hamlet itself is over like thousands years old. I, I don't know exactly the number, but, um, the family Grossi, which is Valentina's family, they, her, their ancestors, um, bought it from another wealthy Florentine family in 1857. And from then, like, the family used this place as their, like, country home. So to get away from the city and they had, they made wine, they made oil and, and, and they still do that. And I think they just outsource it now. Um, because there is, um, there's fields below the, the hamlet, um, because the hamlet's on top of a hill. I don't know if you've, if you've looked it up at all. And, um, the, 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 the stones date back to Etruscan times and Etruscan times started around, um, like 300 BC and this was even before the Romans. So there's a big, long history. I'm not going to get too far into it because I'm not... I, this is why when when we go to Camposevoli, Valentina will give us a, a rundown because she knows the whole history of this land. Um, and also because there's a um, nice little museum that her aunt curated um, before she passed away um, where she'll... We'll, we'll take a tour of that. And it's very, very cool to see. Like, this is why, like, I think I'm so much... I'm so drawn to Italy is because there's so much history that people have traced back to medieval times, to Dante, like all these different types of stories that as much as you guys know, I love stories. <laughs> I was enthralled with the story of the Grossi family and Pifi, um, Valentina's father, when I would see him, like, we would talk and we would have conversations and he'd tell me about his ancestors and, like, what they did. And and it's just, like, incredible, like, from even from when I was a nanny until now, like, they've done so much work on the land and, like, renovating the houses on, on the property that um, I was just looking at some videos I took right before I left um, the family in um, August of, of uh, 2007, 2007. And there was a, there's a video, a really bad video. <laughs> I thought I had a really good camera. I had a Nikon back then, but it the video really sucks. But I had a video of, uh, I was pointing out the Podrino, which is one of the houses that they rent out. And my sister used that for her wedding as well. And it was completely dilapidated and was really cool to see like how far they've come and um, how much they, they've they put in the time to like really make the Hamlet an oasis of relaxation, contemplation. Um, they have writing courses there. They have photography courses there. Like they have a lot of really cool wellness and um, creative type workshops at this Hamlet. And I just want to like paint this picture for you. The, the place is very, very, um, okay, not very, very, but very remote. And it's really kind of, you're, you feel like you're in medieval times. Because even the, the stones that you walk past and the paths are all um gravel like it's gravel roads and it's just and looking out onto the hills it's just it's really amazing like the land and how much it has been preserved and even even like i i wrote a um i wrote a about this um place in my email this this week and and there if you go to the Camposevoli website there's a lot of cool pictures that they've downloaded and put on the website about the history and it's really cool. There's one that I saw and I'm like, oh my God, no way. Like that's where you would go to the pool. And obviously during the 1800s and when the family took it over, there wasn't a pool there yet. But there was a really cool, you can see the gate that you would walk through and like there were no trees. And right now, guys, when you go there, it's like completely covered in trees. And it's like its own little forest and its own little like escape. And it's just 
if you're a history buff like me, like you got to come on this, re- this, um, this travel experience with me, this retreat, because it's, it is a really cool experience to actually see where, like, we're going to be staying and where the farmer, you know, lived and where the priest lived, like, cause they have, there's a church on site. Um, it's just, it's really, really amazing guys. And the, the history has so many cool, um, and Valentina will explain better, but like from what I've read and researched a little bit through through them, is the history of this place is like is very it's quite famous back in like Roman times. There was a pope that had um I I believe um either stayed there or like had some sort of interaction there at, at Campo Sevoli. And then there's a lot of really wealthy families um, from Florence that had their hands in the pot here. Like they were trying to keep hold of this, this, this um, Hamlet. And um, there were a lot of wars fought or conflicts fought on the property um, and around the property. And, and there's really cool pictures of like the world war two. There's some, you know, um, military pictures like it's just guys it's like it's just something to see it's really something to see um apart from like just absorbing the surroundings of Campo Sevoli, there will be a cooking class we'll be doing um um we're probably making pasta because <laughs> why not pasta is amazing and um we will be visiting some really cool towns and um, I haven't mapped out exactly um, the, the like nailed down the actual towns we were we're going to see, but I know for sure I want to go to Pienza and Montepulciano and um, Chetona. We'll go to for sure because it's nearby. And yeah, I mean, get ready to be like in a place where it's only only Italian being spoke, okay, being spoken. Um, where the Wi-Fi is not very good. And I've mentioned this on my podcast numerous times, like know that the Wi-Fi is there, like you can contact home and everything, but it's, it's not one that you're going to just sit on your, on your phone the whole time. Cause it's, um, you don't need it. You don't need it. We have a pool. We're going to have, um, you know, nice excursions. We're going to be able to go to Florence one day. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's going to be a great great trip. And I I just if any of you listening out there if you're looking to do something next June, come with me. All right? It's like why not? I mean, we've been in our homes um these past cup this past year, almost year and almost two years. I mean, depending on you know, we're mostly all working, but like with everything that's going on, I'm like I say this a lot and like, you know, you just never know like when, when it, when when it's time, like you don't want to give up on something that, or stop if you want to really try to travel. Like if you know, like, Oh, well I don't have the funds. Okay. Totally understand. I've got payment plans, got payment plans. Like we'll work it into your schedule and work it to make it feel comfortable for you and there's there's just something about getting on a plane and then like showing up somewhere and uh i'll tell you this like come september when i'm traveling to italy by myself first time by myself since 2011 before stefano and i'm so excited like I know some of you will be coming with um, a loved one or maybe you're coming by yourself. Maybe you want to come by yourself. Maybe that's your, maybe that's what you want to do. You're like, hell yeah, I want to travel alone and see how it feels and like be immersed in the culture and try to communicate with a language that maybe I don't know very well. All these things are things that help us grow. And, And from what I've learned, jumping over the big blue ocean in 2009 when I decided to move abroad. It's scary, yes, 
but it's so exciting and it's so empowering when you step out of the comfort zone that is your life, that is your daily routine, and you truly live in the moment. And that's what I want for you to experience. I want you to experience that. I want you to feel comfortable and I want you to feel like you can ask as many questions as you want before we go. Or if you want to, if you, if you, if you would like to learn some Italian, like I know an Italian course you could take, like there's just so much that I want to offer and show you that I just can't shut up about it. (laughs) I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh my God. Um, something else I was going to talk to you about with the trip. Um, I will be giving you a lot of information beforehand. So it's not like, Hey, okay, Katie, I'm going to come and I'm not giving you any know-how. No, I'm going to tell you how you to buy a ticket for the train. I'm going to give you some guidelines on like Italian customs, or if you want that, like I have a whole slew of information after living there for so long. Like, I want to show you and give you the authentic viewpoint of being in Italy and being at, you know, going to an Italian restaurant and like what to expect um, when you go to an Italian restaurant or what to expect when you get into a cab. Like, all that, all those things will come, um, will will be given to you so you understand like what's going on so you're not like you know in the dark I'm just really 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 excited to start this business and to get this first one down and going and know that I have seven spots left and it's in two apartments okay there are there's a shared bathroom in each one and, um, and I know that's for some of you, you probably are like, I want to share a bathroom on my own bathroom. This is my first one. So don't be, don't worry, like come on this one, see how it is. And if you really want your own bathroom, don't worry, I'm working on it. I've got some other places in mind that I will be, um, showcasing sh- soon, definitely for 2023, but, um, but 2022 is all about compulsively and it's all about, dipping our toes in for the first time and really seeing what we can see and do and feel and eat, taste, drink, everything. Like it's going to be an amazing experience. I'm, I'm, I have so much planned and I'm sure the week's going to go by so fast and I'm like, shit, I forgot something, but I'm really, really excited for those that you, those of you that are interested. And I know there's a handful of you still interested. You just are waiting and, you know, it's hard to make plans as far in advance, but I just want you to know there's payment plans, okay, to hold your spot. Um, The $500 deposit is is non-refundable. So just so you know, if you're ready and you're willing and you want to come, let's put it down and then let's talk. Let's talk payment plan. Let's talk, you know, how it works and, and what to expect and please don't hesitate to email me and ask me questions at trulyitalytours at gmail.com because there's so much. If you haven't traveled abroad, and especially now with COVID, like there's a lot to know and there's a lot that I will give you so you are supported and that you're not left in the dark, okay? There's just so much that I, that's why I'm traveling right now. Like we, if you listen to my last podcast about how we traveled on a COVID-free flight, it was a lot of paperwork, but you know what? It was worth it. It was worth that that piece of pizza. It was worth that glass of wine. It was worth seeing family. It was worth um, seeing the countryside. It was worth hearing the Italian on the street. It was worth it. Everything was worth it. And I read something recently about travel. I'm starting to like get all these like these random posts about about travel and like it, they 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 seem to like just be lighting a fire under my butt because I'm like Katie you gotta talk about this like you're not gonna get more people if you don't talk about it so so this is 
this is a few. I just want to I just want to read these to you because I think if you are like me and you have an adventurous spirit, you might you might um, resonate with this. An adventurous life does not necessarily mean climbing mountains, swimming with sharks, or jumping off cliffs. It means risking yourself by leaving a little piece of you behind in all in all those you meet along the way. And that that saying right there is like telling me like there's so many people that are going to meet each other on these trips that they might be friends for life. They might go on trips again together. Like that's what I want for this. That's what I totally want for this. Um here's another one. Travel makes you realize that no matter how much you know, there's always more to learn. Bam. Like totally. That's exactly, that's exactly how I feel. Exactly how I feel with this. Um, we have another one. I just love these. These are just so fun. Travel is the only thing that, oh, is, the, uh, blah, blah, sorry. <laughs> Travel is the only thing you buy that makes you richer. It is. Because these experiences you're going to have with me, or maybe on your own after you finish a travel experience, you're going to travel on your own with a loved one or by yourself. Those experiences are so much more. They have so much more in them. They're richer. They're full of life. They have an experience for you to remember. They have a feeling in your body remembering when you first drank that wine, when you first saw the David, when you first saw the Vatican, wherever you're going to see, like that's, that's it. That is just like the coolest thing. I, okay, I have a couple more. This is me. If traveling was free, you'd never see me again. Hells, yeah. Like, I'd be everywhere. Also, if I had a private jet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Jobs fill your pocket, adventures fill your soul. Oh, yeah. All right, last one. Last one. Travel as much as you can, as far as you can. As long as you can. Life's not meant to be lived in one place. Okay, some people might not agree with that. But I know my one place is Italy. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, well, this was kind of a hodgepodge of an episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I just wanted to get it out there that, you know, Campo Sevoli is a place where I think Anybody coming for the first time to Italy, it's a great place. It's It just has so much to offer. We have so many excursions, um, relaxation time to do by the pool or to journal or to go hiking. There's just so many things that you can do with this experience. And maybe it's all about meeting people. Maybe it's all about being by yourself, but you, you know, you'll be friendly with people, but you know, you're, you're kind of introverted and you want to, you know, journal, you want to maybe work on your book. I don't know, (laughs) but I, I want you to contact me because it's going to be amazing. I've said amazing a million. I need to find a different adjective. (laughs) I thank you for listening to this, um, kind of, um, disorganized um, episode (laughs) but that's who I am I have a feeling and I want to talk about it and here I am talking about it so I will see you on the next episode or hear you or you're listen to me whatever you know what I mean Um, on the next episode I'm gonna get Chelsea back on and we're gonna talk about our pre-departure routine I guess, is what we would call that. Um, She's much more organized than me, so I'm really excited to hear how she organizes herself. And then another thing, which I haven't um, talked to her again, but I hope to get her on the podcast, Um, a good friend, my good friend, Caitlin Bosshart, she is um, a wedding coach and an amazing life coach. And 
I met her through the the scenario the the, the all the cor- the one of the courses that I did last year that we we won't talk about but um but she's amazing and I'm going to get her on the podcast just to talk about wedding coaching and um I told when I found out what she did I said shit I wish I had you you know 10 years ago when I got married because it's a really cool thing. So if that is enticing you, if anyone out there is getting married and maybe they're looking for a wedding coach, I'm going to talk to her about weddings in Italy and just let her know. Maybe, I don't know. It'll be a really fun thing because I swear if anybody wants to get married in Italy and maybe Caitlin's going to be your wedding coach, that doesn't mean she has to go with you and you have to pay for her airfare. Don't worry. (laughs) Caitlin will go by herself. (laughs) But I can't wait to, for you to hear um, our conversation um, again, not sure when that's going to happen, but I'm really excited for you to meet some of my cool people in my circle. And yeah, and that's about it, guys. I will see you on the flip side. Ciao, ciao. I am beyond grateful for you listening to my podcast right now. I am so excited to share my journey of living abroad and all my stories of Florence and Italy and all the places in between that I've visited. If this has reached you in any way and you would like to continue, please subscribe now. Also, go check out my website, trulyitaly.tours, for all my travel experiences. Ci si vede. Ciao. I am beyond grateful for you listening.